are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What's up, everybody? Welcome into episode 124 of the College Loop Podcast. Hope everybody's having a great, fantastic afternoon. Colin and I are here rolling this one duos, which is why if you see, this looks a little bit like a rough intro. It's okay. We're going to carry the rest of the show. Um, the technical side, not my strong suit, certainly is that of Colin Beiersdorf. As I mentioned at, in the intro or did not mention in the intro, I'm Harrison Tarr at Beiersdorf Tarr on the board at Bird app. If you want to go hang out with me, great, wonderful. But you should want to go hang out with Mr. Colin Beiersdorf. Colin, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. Um, you know, it's a beautiful Monday here on the Plains. Finished class early, getting an early recording in. Always a great, great way to spend a Monday. It's never makes me happier than the opportunities we get to get in and just kind of grind this thing out and get after it um, for the loopers, of course, for no one other than the loopers. We're going to jump right into it, guys. Busy, busy, busy week on the Plains. Got a good bit of news, and we're going to start with football per usual. What else is new, Colin? Welcome to the college loop, the football loop at this point. And we were we were actually talking before the show, folks. We're cooking up some new fun stuff for you guys here at the loop for basketball season, which is not far away, my friend. Not no. far at all. Just over a week away from Auburn basketball. But before we can even cross that bridge, there has been – some interesting traction in the Auburn Twitterverse today uh, surrounding, shockingly, another press conference quote from Hugh Freeze. And uh, do you want to read this one out? Um, do you have it in front of you, Colin? Um, it, it's, it, it alludes to the potential of starting one Robbie Ashford. And I know, folks, you're, you were sitting there going, there's no Dylan on the show today. Where's my Robbie Ashford truth in coming from? You were not going to get that level <laughs> of um, – uh, glazing, if you will, from me, but uh, you will get some of it. Colin, if you got the quote, go ahead, my friend. Yeah, we'll hold it down the best we can for the Ob Robbie Ashford <laughs> truther. Um, but it was just Hugh Freeze talking about where Robbie's place was in the offense. And he said that looking at Robbie's place, um, he was asking if it was an every down situation or if it was just bringing a package that enables the drive to continue. And it was the dilemma there of having Robbie alluding to Robbie being the the full-time starter versus keeping him with his packages uh, as is now. And so that got Auburn Twitter talking. Yeah, as, as it should. Uh, there's been a, a large conversation here, and, and we talked about it a lot in the live stream on sa Sunday night, Colin, following Auburn's loss to, to Ole Miss. It's read 28-21, but should have read 28-14 uh, if, you're, if you're looking and taking away garbage time. But – a lot of people talking about there's got to be changes in the in this offense, and it's not new about, oh, is it Thorne? Is it Ashford? Is it quite possibly Colin Byersdorf coming off the bench at this point? It really, it's it's not a new conversation. This is something that's been going on for us really since our inception at the College Loop, a, a, a continuity, if you will, of, uh, of who's going to be taking snaps for Auburn in, in 2023. And now we're in week seven, week eight, excuse me, game seven, game eight. I lied, three and four. Heading into game eight, sorry, so that's technically week nine. And Auburn still doesn't have a definitive answer of who is the better option at quarterback. Now, everyone holds their own opinions. But, Colin, if Hugh Freeze is saying this, and there's a lot of people that believe that the whole trotting Robbie Ashford out uh, to start the game on Saturday was just a crowd pleaser, no, no chance that those same people are not thinking that this is also just one of those please the people movements, him saying this on Saturday. But if there is some traction, is this what we think that it could be in terms of giving Robbie Ashford what his would be his quote unquote fair shot on Saturday? I mean, I think it is. Um, at, at a certain point, we are we are nine weeks into the season and we still don't have a true starting quarterback that always will will raise eyebrows. Um, I do think that Robbie gives our offense the best shot to run its best in its current format. Uh, I think it just plays more to his his style of game. Um, and I think we need to see that. I would love to see a full game of either Robbie or Peyton at this point, but I want to see start from finish Robbie or start to finish Peyton Thorne. Um, and it's it's time to choose one. It is. It is. And as you head into a, a game against the Mississippi State team that, let's just be honest, is not good. It feels like if you're going to start trying to install things, and we're going to talk here in a minute about coming down the stretch and how you can kind of try some other things and how this could shape out for Auburn. It feels like this was the time. Uh, you've had your what you want to call continuity, if you will, or lack thereof, in a lot of our a lot of opinions, myself included. 
coming uh, coming to this point of the season, and then you're sitting looking in the mirror and you're three and four, saying, "Okay, we acknowledge we have to do something different on offense. We acknowledge that we need to have an identity that you still don't have." Seven games in, maybe Robbie Ashford is the answer. I don't think you could come against a much better opponent to do so. Mississippi State is one and three in the conference. Now, granted, who am I to throw stones since Auburn is what zero and four in the conference, right? That being said, I still think we and, and everyone agrees that this that Auburn's toughest part of the schedule and all the teams that they have lost to to this point are head and shoulders better than, than Mississippi State. There are opportunities for, for Robbie Ashford to kind of go out there and establish a rhythm and do his thing. I think the biggest question mark here, Colin, is what is your confidence level that Hugh Freeze gives him the keys to the kingdom and just stays out of the way? I don't think mine's that high. Uh, yeah, low. Um, I think that we will continue to see a two quarterback system, at least for the time being. Um, I, th- I think, as you mentioned, that Auburn is going into the, the latter half of their schedule in terms of difficulty um, facing not the bottom feeders of the SEC, but the teams that are struggling along there with us um, in Arkansas, in Mississippi State, in Vandy. I think that's probably add Auburn in there. That's probably the four bottom in the SEC. Sure. Um, so it's definitely a, a time to do it. This is where you prove that you're not in there with the Vandys, the Mississippi States, and the Arkansas, that we're just a step above that. Yeah. Um, Middle of the pack's fine right now. Yeah. You're you're taking over a four and eight team. That's what I feel like everyone has kind of lost sight of. Um, is that this team was not good last year, and Hugh Freeze has come in and he's he's trying to get stuff going, um, and it might just take some time. Yeah, and I, I think that the big the big concern here is, and, and what we heard from a lot of listeners of the loop and people who commented. Thank you guys for joining in on the live stream. For those of you guys who listened and who listened afterwards, you know we do it every Sunday after a game. So make sure you drop in next time. But. I think the, a lot of the feedback we heard, Colin, was a lot of people challenging whether or not Hugh Freeze actually gives a shit about this season. And I, I think that at some point you have to start doing things like trotting Robbie Ashford out at the beginning of the game, like mentioning you're trying to figure out if it's an every snap kind of occurrence that, that he fits into to plug in as, as the missing piece, if you will. Because a lot of people are questioning whether or not Hugh Freeze didn't punt this season before it even started now. And I'm not saying that that claim is valid. I'm not saying that claim is invalid. I'm just saying that this is a narrative now that we've seen really surface, quite frankly, since Saturday. Uh, the the concerns certainly arose following the beatdown bloodbath you received in, in Death Valley and Baton Rouge. But at this point, a lot of people were hoping that you could find a way to win one of the last four games you played. And you didn't. And you come into this game, okay, you have a couple of opportunities. One, establish an offensive identity that you still don't have, and I don't have a ton of confidence you can. But two, at least prove to your fan base that you're doing something different, that you're at least acknowledging not their concerns, because to be honest with you, Colin, their concerns are no more important than my, yours or mine. The only ones that really matter are the board of trustees and the, and, and the athletic director, John Cohen, at that point. But still, prove to the Auburn fan base that you're still trying to win ball games this year. And, and I do think that's still on the table. Hell, I think Auburn could still have a season that you look back and go, well, that was a pretty good year for year one of a head coach. But if that begins with Robbie Ashford on Saturday, that's probably going to give you a lot more leadway for one. There, there's you an upside. A lot of people give Robbie a little bit longer leash. I know a lot of people are saying that uh, it's, it's the fans that are turning on Robbie. I don't think that that's the case whatsoever, but I think you, you have a little bit longer leash if you're at least trying things. And also, you've got to take the keys away from Philip Montgomery. But that'll that'll be a conversation for later later in the week. I don't think anybody would disagree with. Looking at Mississippi State from the surface level, their defensive stats are just not unimpressive. They're just not impressive at the same, at the same time. If you, if you look at yards per game, opponents are rushing for 127.6 yards per game. I'm just going to be candid and tell you that that does not serve me well for a Robbie Ashford offense. I'm just going to be transparent. I think that there's plenty of opportunities, but I don't know that that's exactly what what you're looking for. Now, they are giving up 239-plus passing through the air. So here you are again, Colin, (laughs) at at the separation of two roads. (laughs) Will you take the thorn in your side or will you take Robert? Uh, That's the million-dollar question. If if Robbie Ashford can come in and kind of do his thing this week, this is against a defense that's serving more toward defending the run that bodes well going down the stretch for the keys to be hits, right? I mean, you would think we need to get the the short pass game going there. Um, just get it out quickly to, to our receivers and see if they can make plays. Um, and I think n- now more than last year, we have the ability to do that. 
Um, we've got guys that can go get a ball and, and make some run after catch. Um, I think looking at Jarquez Hunter, the game he played last week, um, is a very good example of that. Um, shout out to him. I, I didn't get to be on the live stream. Jarquez Hunter was like the the shining star for me. He in finally looked like Jarquez. Yes, it was it was so refreshing to see. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be you can't always rely on the one the run. And that's what Auburn has been suffering from this year. Um, I feel like we're very one dimensional and teams know that. Like the play where we trotted Holden out at wide receiver and he got blown up for like 10 negative yards. That makes sense because everyone in the stadium can see that. So Auburn needs to work on being two dimensional in the offensive game. Being a multi-dimensional offense usually serves you um, the opportunity to win ball games. Um, and and this, this Auburn defense has been lights out, but that's neither here nor there. In my opinion, I think they've been playing well above expectations. No, they're um, balling out. They absolutely are. Let's talk. And we were talking a little crazy before the show started about about Auburn looking down the stretch uh, in, in in the remaining games. You've got now. Let's see if I can just without looking at it. I haven't don't have it in front of me. I'm Mississippi State's on one screen, and I have Colin's beautiful face on another. For those of you guys who are listening to the the, the stream broadcast without uh, the video, see off the top of my head, it is Mississippi State, and then you have Vanderbilt, then you have Arkansas, New Mexico State, and Alabama. Correct. Remaining. remaining. So. When you, when you look at those five games, I think everyone in Auburn world, in Auburn land, don't look at the FPI, don't look at Vegas, ignore those. I think that in your heart of hearts, you, you really believe Auburn can win four of those. And then that fifth game pending, right? How, I guess we're, we'll go floor ceiling here, and I'm going to turn, turn this over to you. With an actual emphasis on changing your offense and actually making it known to, to the fans and to, to your boosters and such that you're making efforts to change things, especially if that starts with Robbie Ashford, even if it doesn't, where can Auburn find themselves come December? Where can, where can Auburn find themselves come that fourth Saturday in November? Um, Colin, and in your opinion, let's get your floor and your ceiling. Okay. So, so floor, I think the worst that this Auburn team can do with this five game stretch, I, I think they win three. Um, I said it earlier in the season. I said there were two locks in this podcast. One was Daniel Locke, and the other was a lock that Auburn was going to a bowl game. Absolutely. Um, I think that still stands. I think you can win any combination of the three of the four that we're up against. Um, and then the, the Iron Bowl, crazy things happen in Jordan-Hare. I will never, ever um, go into a home game thinking that, there's not a chance we could win. Um, Alabama has looked beatable, very beatable, especially in the right environment. Um, and so if you go into that game, let's say for, for some reason you go 4-0. Let's say you go 4-0 going into the Iron Bowl. I don't think it's out of the picture that you come away with that with a win. But granted, a lot has to go right, but that is why this is the ceiling. So floor is 3-2. Is and two. Ceiling is is five and zero oh with an Iron Bowl win in Hugh Freeze's first year as an Auburn Tiger, which would be tremendous. Uh, that, would, that would be huge, and and probably a lot of these we should have never hired Hugh, fire Hugh, absolute anarchists in my opinion. Uh, um, we'll probably be silenced a little bit there. I I think that all of those things pen, depend on one thing, mm. and and it is the quarterback position. And no, I'm not going one guy or another. I'm not. I think in order to win four of the next five, three of the next five, five of the next five, any any in that range, I'm with you. Auburn's going bowling. I, I firmly believe that. You've got to pick one guy. Um, and 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 it really, I know that there's this whole, you know, we can keep the Asher package. Sure. I don't mind that in some circumstances. But what we saw on Saturday and what we've seen previously is not going to cut it. Um, you've got to make sure you're sticking with whatever your truth is in your mind um, if you're Hugh Freeze. And Philip Montgomery, even though I, I will go back to saying that dude should have no right to speak about anything on this offense. But that's neither here nor there. Once again, Hugh Freeze is the head coach. Ultimately, it is all his decision. But you've got to ride with one guy. And if you if you can develop some kind of consistency, there are going to be ups and downs. Football ebb and flows. It ebbs and it flows. That, that is the nature of the game when you are not an Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson in its, in its peak. Um, you know, like one of those teams you walk in, you expect to win. And, and Auburn's not there. You're not. So you, you you can't be in that mindset right now. But it's going to ebb and flow. 
there are going to be ups and downs with both of these guys. They're both going to turn the ball over. They're both going to make sloppy mistakes. They're just not perfect quarterbacks. But giving the opportunity for one of them to kind of ride out the rest of this year and say, this is your job. You will not lose it, barring, you know, something catastrophic or, you know, completely understandable uh, or an injury. I think that gives you a tremendous, tremendous opportunity to really, really make a lot of people surprised coming down the stretch. I think Auburn comes into Jordan-Hare Stadium on Saturday. I think they're going to beat the brakes off of Mississippi State. I really do. Um, even despite this lackluster offense, I, I think that they're going to beat the brakes off of Mississippi State. You head up to Nashville next week, and I think you probably could – should beat the brakes off of Vanderbilt. That feels like a sneaky game that Auburn can find themselves very much in the mix of. But I think they that they they soundly handle that. I think you thump Arkansas. Um, that team is horrific. New Mexico State. If you lose that ball game, all right, then we can talk about firing Hugh Freeze. Um, and then you come into to Jordan Hare Stadium and uh, on, on a chilly s- Saturday afternoon in November against you know your biggest rival and and what people call Big Brother in Alabama, Nick Saban. I think that, I mean, I would say on a, 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 a night game, but it won't be at least three thirty kickoff or two thirty kickoff on CBS. Um, I think that you could uh, you could give the opportunity for Gary Danielson to go home very sad in his last game he gets to call um, for the Alabama Crimson Tide, bar, SEC championship pending. But I think there's a lot of limitless opportunities. But to me, Colin, it, it boils down to you got to rock with one guy. There's got to be some kind of offense and consistency, right? Is there? There's not another way, is there? No, I I think we're both in complete agreement with this. Uh, you either have one quarterback or you have none. And Auburn has had none for nine weeks. Um, and it's something that me personally, I'm pretty tired of. And I'm sure a lot of other people in the Auburn fan base are getting sick and tired of. Just let it be one guy. I don't care who it is. Just let it be one guy. Just let it ride at some point. And and, and you've got to make sure that you don't waver. I mean, if if Robbie Ashford starts the game – and he throws a couple of picks in the first, you know, four or five drives. I'm still in the camp of don't bench him. I, I, I that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, you got to let him go out there, make mistakes, get a feel for things, play with the first team, and also develop a rhythm. I mean, it's impossible to do it when you've got two guys mixing in and out, especially on within four downs, dude. That that stuff drives me bonkers. It really does. And I think I think an example of that is uh, two weeks ago when uh, Robbie and and Frazier had a great connection. I'm sure that they were getting very similar reps in practice, and that is why they can go and make those plays on the field. Um, It's stuff like that. You just got to have people getting reps with the people we want on the field at all times. It's just, I don't know. It makes no sense to me. We didn't mention this on the live stream on Saturday. I'm going to go back a little bit, um, and we're going to publish, for those of you guys who are wondering where our post-game grades for uh, the Auburn Ole Miss game uh, are, they'll be out tomorrow uh, or today as this show is coming out. Uh, and we'll we'll publish those off air. But I don't think that anyone talked about very much the downfield shot uh, that Robbie was given the opportunity to take right before um, halftime of the Ole Miss game. That was picked off. was P.I., um, but it was picked off. Um, that was blatant P.I., my man. I don't know how that one to get called. Uh, but that's neither one of there. I kind of love play, shot, play calls like that. Like, at some point – when you have the opportunity to open things up and try new things, like and try to be successful and move the ball in chunks, freaking do it. Like, what is what is what is stopping you from trying that? Um, it sure as hell shouldn't be. Oh well, it's not working because you don't know. Like, <laughs> you literally don't have the 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 knowledge and the sample size to know. Uh, I think that we'll see a much different Auburn offense on Saturday. I truthfully do. Yeah, I, I definitely want to see more downfield action. Um, I think the only argument against it right now is the the few times we've done it this year. It's been a lot of picks. Um, and I think that really is – I feel like we just need to do it more often. Um, we'll do it like, you know, three, four times a game, and it's, it'll always be one receiver that we're eyeing down. They're double covered. Um, we just got to get – the schematics have to be better on these downfield passes. Well, and, that, um, and in, my, in my opinion, Colin, that, that starts with you, Freeze. Uh, mm-hmm. It does. I know that a lot of people are pointing to, you know, fire Phil Montgomery. I'm in that camp. I get it. I'm in the camp. But ultimately, Hugh Freeze and John Conley mentioned this on the Sunday Night Stream. Came in as an offensive mastermind quarterback whisperer head coach. If you know something's not working with your offense, you should not have to trust your offensive coordinator. If Kirby Smart knows something's not going well with his defense, puts his hands on it. If Nick Saban knows something's not going well with his defense, his hands are on it. I can list off and continue, right? This is not like unique to just an Auburn situation. You've got to not, well, one, don't get out coached. Don't get out coached by Lane Kiffin for sure. 
But like, don't definitely don't get out coached by Zach Arnett on Saturday. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my marbles. But it, it does start with Hugh Freeze taking ownership and saying, look, if if my OC is not getting the job done and he's not installing what I tell him to install, Colin, if you're if you tell like, here's a question. If your boss told you to do something, you did the direct opposite. Would you expect your boss to continue to give you responsibilities? No, I think my boss would be pretty peeved. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, that's not that's literally exactly what's going on. Yeah, my big thing with it is Hugh Freeze keeps mentioning how Philip Montgomery's verbiage for the offense is different than his, um, and that that is what is really Why? stopping him from calling plays. Exactly. Why? Why do you allow? Why that? is it different? Um, and that is what I have just been screaming all all year. I don't understand. Like, I, obviously, I have never called plays for a college football team. Um, but why don't we get on the same page? Why is the offensive coordinator and the head coach speaking a different language? That makes no sense to me. That's a disconnect that it, it's un, it's inexcusable. I mean, there, there are no excuses for that kind of that level of disconnect at the SEC level. It, it does not matter how down to the trenches your program is. If your coaching staff's not on the same page from the head coach down, you've got a problem. Uh, I do expect that to be resolved, and, and things are going to look better coming down the stretch. They probably look better than they are. I mean, let's just be honest. Um, just because I the level of competition is such a steep drop-off. If there's one thing you can say about this first half, is it definitely prepared Auburn for the second half. Now, injuries pending. But that being said, I'm really ready to talk about things not football, Colin, for just a little bit. Um, before we get out of here on this a little bit abbreviated version, this is when Dylan's really listening to the show and he's ready to slip my throat, but it'll be okay. <laughs> Two ways people can support us. I'll tell them the first, you tell them the second, Colin. Sound good? I'll, yeah. Awesome. I'll lead off here. Number one way is free. It's easy. It's the most simple thing you'll ever do. If you're watching here on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you can stay up to date with everything new coming out here at the College Loop. You guys, your continual support is awesome. If you want to go and start dropping those uh, Auburn Mississippi State score predictions in the comments, go right ahead. If you want to tell us who you want to see starting on Saturday, go right ahead. Um, if you think that um, you've got a better chicken wing suggestion than I've ever seen um, in Auburn, Alabama, and you want to give me a good wing recommendation, go right ahead. Thank you guys for your continual support. If you're listening on a non-YouTube platform, make sure you give us five stars, give us a thumbs up, and all of that jazz because that is how we can continue to hashtag grow the brand. So, Colin, number number that was the number one way. What's the other? What's one B? What's the other? What's one B? The other way they can support the support the show. So one B. That's I think right. that's buying the war damn shirt. So yeah, just go to the warport.com and pick yourself up a feeling loopy t-shirt comes in so many different colors. You got black, you got gray, you got Navy, anything that you think you look good in, you can get, I promise you. Um, great game day fit. Still haven't worn, worn one out to game day, but it's going to happen. And we're going to have a good time. It's going to happen. If you don't feel like typing that in the search bar, you can always just plug it. Uh, just, we always plug it in right there in our description to all of our shows. So you can just click the link and head straight over to warport.com and purchase your very own Feeling Loopy t-shirt. Thank you, Colin, for your outstanding work per usual, as you always do here on the College Loop. You don't get you don't get enough appreciation, Colin. You really don't. I appreciate it. And I want you to know I appreciate you. And someone else that Auburn fans are going to appreciate this year, other than Colin Byersdorf, is Mr. Aiden Holloway. We're talking Auburn basketball right here on the College Loop. We're going to talk about Aiden Holloway's naming to John Rothstein's top 25 impact freshman. Okay. For those of you listening, if you just said, who is John Rothstein in your head, that's okay. Um, we're going to change that going into this season. Uh, I have no connection to Rothstein whatsoever. I just think he's a fantastic follow on all social media platforms, and he's fantastic with his updates on literally every level of college basketball. Um, dude is just unbelievably good. His analysis on – on Aiden Holloway. The Tigers have had tremendous success with undersized point guards over the past decade, and Aiden Holloway is next in line. The six-foot floor general is already an elite shooter and has an uncanny ability to raise the game of, uh, of everyone he's playing or with. Holloway will make an instant impact at Auburn. That's a given. I think that a lot of people think Aiden Holloway could play himself into a uh, well, presumptive first-round draft pick uh, in, in the upcoming NBA draft. Colin, how excited do you see this young man and, and what he brings to a a true Bruce Pearl, what I think is going to be a three and D three level scoring team. I mean, he brings a lot. Um, obviously I think he's going to be running our offense. Um, I think we all know that he, he's going to be able to spot up shooter. Uh, I think the part that we're not talking about is the way he's going to be able to distribute the ball to other playmakers in the offense. Um, I think that it's going to be a lot of fun to watch Aiden Holloway ball out in the jungle. Um, 
I just don't see a world in which he doesn't immediately produce for the Tigers. Um, day one starter will probably lead the team in scoring. Mm, I'm going to say Maybe. like 40%, 40% of the time. I was about to say Denver 40. Jones pending, my man. Yeah, no, there's, there's some other real talent on this team, but I think it starts with him and he's going to be able to run the offense like any Bruce, uh, any great Bruce Pearl point guard will be able to. Kind of, I'm getting kind of tall Jalen Harper vibes. Jared Harper, no, I said Jalen, excuse me, Jared Harper, not yeah. Jalen, Jared Harper. Uh, Jared Harper vibes. Um, is he, is his Holloway, I can't remember if we picked this on this show, if I picked this on another show, so bear with me. Was he your first year uh, addition, like uh, our newcomer, instant impact newcomer of the year? I think I said Cheney Johnson. Okay, that's a great pick, I was going to say, because there's a handful of guys that a lot of people should be really excited about. Cheney Johnson, Aiden Holloway, and I'm really excited about Denver Jones. Um, yeah. Dude. We're going to get a real three-level scoring, three and D, like Auburn just squad. And I don't know why people are sleeping on Auburn as hard as they are right now. I think it's going to be a fun team. Like, I get that we're not even in, like, the preseason polls, whatever. Perfect. This is going to be a fun team. I love not being in the preseason polls, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Wake up in March and then put us there then. That's when I care about it. There you go. That's when I really care about it. And a lot of a lot of opportunities early on in the season. I mean, they're going to play a, a a USC team that, dude, that USC team could be a Final Four contender this year. Um, and then they're going to get them to come to the Plains this year. Auburn's going to have some opportunity for some statement wins before the SEC season even starts. People gonna they, op- they open their season up with Baylor. I know. Like it's it's gonna be a fun season. A lot of a lot of tough non-con, but that only strengthens your conference play. You've got Baylor, you've got USC, you've got Indiana. And Indiana being on a neutral site, Baylor is a red game, right? And no, it's in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Falls, in like South a 2,000-person gym. Don't know why we're doing that. That's perfect. Um, no, I love that. We should do that more. Sure. Auburn basically already plays in a 2,000-person gym. Yeah. Hey, it doesn't sound like that, though. It does not sound like that because the jungle is crazy. And speaking of the jungle – Auburn women's basketball. You like that little transaction? Transi- I transition? do like that. A little transaction? Transaction. Yeah, dude. I can't speak <laughs> today, man. I had a day at the office. Not a bad one. Just, you know, a long one. Lots of uh, Monday morning. Involved. That's right. Monday. It's a Monday. That's exactly what it boils down to. So, but speaking of the jungle, Auburn women's basketball set their third consecutive season ticket record. Coach Jay's just doing it different. Um, this group has absolutely per- persuaded the entire Auburn fan base to buy in. And – they're doing it through the transfer portal, getting rid of locker room cancers. I'm not going to call out any names, but if I were, one did transfer to Texas A&M. Um, and, and playing a physical defensive-minded brand of basketball, which is certainly the way to go in women's hoops. Uh, points you can you can find. It's the defense that's usually hard to come by. Two six-foot-plus bigs. There's no reason to not be excited about this group. And I – genuinely believe colin that this is tell me you can tell me if i'm bugging too hard but i think this is the year that auburn can find themselves back in the women's ncaa tournament okay so you might be bugging a little bit um, <laughs> there's definitely a definitely a shot um and i know you are a lot more in tune with this team than i am um but coach jay it's it's about her time she came in here and she's getting her players in and I, I believe in Coach Jay more than more than most Auburn coaches on campus. So and with good reason. I mean, there's yes. been there's been tangible results year to year. I mean, she's and improved year one to year two, and we're ready to see year three. And she overtook a, a train wreck. If we want to call what Hugh Freeze took a train wreck, Coach Coach Jay took over something similar. I will say that if if, if Coach Jay can return Auburn to perennial births of the NCAA tournament, her turnaround will be the second most impressive of an active coach on campus. Brent Crouch. I was about to say. A lot of people thinking Butch, Butch Thompson. No. Brent Crouch. What this guy has done is unmatched. And we're going to talk volleyball here in just one second. I know, I know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna give us the rundown on where Auburn volleyball is at. A little banged up as you mentioned earlier. Um, but before we do so, Auburn softball, we're gonna jump from women's basketball to Auburn softball. They defeated Gulf Coast State. 4 nothing in Wallace State, 8 nothing to close out a perfect, undefeated, no runs given up, fall camp. Now, granted, they played um, some high school teams, essentially, that, but that's neither here nor there because not giving up a single run across, what was it, six games? At, 
thought it was seven or eight, honestly. Seven or eight games? Okay, whatever. Regardless, I, I think it was eight because they put up 54. Auburn put up 54 runs, which is bonkers. <laughs> um, absolutely nuts. This group is, I think, going to be a little bit better off than we expected just because of new newcomers filling in roles that we didn't expect in the first place. Uh, I mean, it, look at uh, – oh, my gosh. Uh, Clemens got it done. I mean, and Emma, Emma Rolf, obviously, a returner. But Cle, uh, Clemens holding down first base. Left-handed pitching and relief for uh, – not relief, but to give time off for Maddie Penta so she doesn't have to throw every single pitch come the spring. Granted, Penta didn't really have to work this fall. No need to work her. And then you got Emma Rolf. I think she's going to have a really big 2023 year. I think that this, de- this team is, like, not deeper than last year, Colin, but, like, deeper in places that they needed to be. Is that weird? No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, we they did lose a lot of talent at the end of last year, um, but they they've replaced most, if not all, of it. Um, and I guess we'll have to see once we get into the real season. But fall ball was a great look into what this team could be. Um, definitely some some big hitters, and, and we've, we've seen fall balls go way worse than this. So like, for sure, like like this was this was a good benchmark. Um, but it is a big year for Mickey Dean too. Let's not forget losing all that talent. A lot of people are looking at him this year to say, Hey, is it you or is it another outside factor or some kind of resource that we can fix? Um, because you've got to get out of the first round of a regional this year. I, I don't think that that's really an optional option. You've got to at least host one, even though Auburn got snubbed in hosting one last year. That's neither here nor there. All right. Now comes the Colin Byers for hour of the show. Well, we're going to talk first about Auburn soccer. Um, they took down LSU three nothing at home, so that's uh, that was on the planes this past Sunday. Tigers are seven six and four. I hate draws. I do. I just hate how any sport can ever end when no, neither team wins. That pisses me off. But whatever. The Tigers are seven six and four and continue to be a bubble team, sort of, kinda for the twenty twenty three SEC tournament. Break down where Auburn soccer sits, where Karen Hoppe and company is, and how they can make an appearance in that SEC tournament uh, this this fall. Yeah. Um, first, as someone who works a lot of soccer games, I love draws. Uh, I mean, it means I get to go home early. Um, but yeah, Karen Hoppe and the Auburn Tigers are on the outside looking in of the SEC. Um, this is the last week of SEC play. Um, Auburn's going to finish the season up at Georgia uh, this Thursday. Um, and the entire rest of the SEC will finish up then as well. Um, top 10 teams will get to make the tournament in Pensacola. Auburn right now is sitting um, in eighth. Um, but it is a very close um, lineup with, I think, so from eight down to, I guess, let's say 13, there's a three-point difference, and every win gets you three points in <laughs> SEC play, and every draw gets you one. So reasonably, a lot, of, a lot could shake up. Um, so Auburn really is controlling their own destiny. A win versus South Carolina, not South Carolina, a win versus UGA would um, put the Tigers in to the clinch. tournament. Yeah, they'd clinch. Um, and if they drew, it would they would need some some help, but it would look pretty good. A loss would would be scary. Um, but yeah, you really got to look crossing at your fingers and saying your prayers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Vandy that, Tennessee is a big game to be looking at if you're um, an Auburn fan, and you need South Carolina to beat Florida. Um, it just wouldn't be Auburn sports if you weren't you know, holding your breath until, uh, until right before the conference tournament in, in a lot of situations. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Auburn scored three goals in their last game, which is, I think the most they've scored in sec play this season. Um, obviously that's a good thing to be walking into your final game with, um, two weeks ago, they beat the number six team in the country in Arkansas. So if they make the tournament reasonably, anything could happen. The whole thing with Auburn is they have stout defense and great goalkeeping. They just struggle to score sometimes. And the SEC, SEC tournament, there are no draws. So someone will score. Someone we will, will not win. have any 0-0 ties, which we've had a few this season. Um, so it should be looking fun heading towards the SEC tournament in Pensacola in Colin, next week. It starts Monday. Colin, are you telling me that there's a team that plays on grass in the fall and Auburn that can – get it done on defense, but can't get it done on offense. Yeah, believe it or not. <sighs> That's a hell of a narrative. That is a hell of a narrative. All right. 
One last thing we're going to touch on real quick is Auburn Volleyball. And we were talking about a minute ago about Brent Crouch and the incredible job he's done. We're literally resurrecting this program from the ashes. Talk to me right now where Auburn Volleyball is at, Colin, and, and where they can be um, if they can find their way back to health. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, Auburn Volleyball stays ranked for the eighth straight week. Um, first time ever being ranked this season, and they've stayed there, which is impressive. They've been floating around the 20s, 24 right now. Um, Brent Longest Crouch they've got ever been his, ranked, by the way. Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> um, Crouch got his 50th win this week, which is the fastest Auburn coach to ever do so. Um, so, congrats there. Um, he said the next 50 will be quicker, which <laughs> I enjoyed. Um, but, yeah. Big game, big game against um, who? Who was it? Because it was South Carolina, Missouri. Big game against South Carolina. Um, not not a great game versus Missouri. It was a <laughs> it was a sweep there on Friday. But against South Carolina, the Tigers fought hard, five sets. Um, you got to win by two in volleyball, so they ended up going back and forth at the end of the fifth set for a while. Um, Madison Shear recorded her career high in kills. Um, was throwing it down all game. Uh, against South Carolina had 24 uh, kills and she'd also I think she had tied her career high or something very close two weeks prior when they traveled to South Carolina so if you see Auburn playing South Carolina in the SEC tournament or at some reason in postseason play um, be on the lookout for Madison Shear to drop 20 plus kills and and go off and also buckle up for what is certain to be a five match, uh, five set match because both <laughs> times have got both, both uh, matches have gone to five sets um, against South Carolina at this point this year. A lot of volleyball left to be played though, Colin. Uh, I, I'm looking, I think it's like another nine, nine, yeah. uh, nine matches that, that, that Auburn's got. So, um, you know, I, I can foresee, a, I'll, I'll go and predict a 24 and five overall finish <laughs> in the, <laughs> for the Tigers. No, Tigers are 15 and five right now. And, I believe I thought I saw an elusive. Nope, never mind. I thought I thought I saw an elusive like stray non-con. I was like, how did that get there? No, but you've got two left against Alabama, so that's another fun one. Georgia this weekend and Alabama both on Friday and Sunday. Both of those on the road. Talk about your own mental health. Um, so buckle up there. Plenty of volleyball left to be played, um, and in Auburn certainly in the mix uh, for 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 a conference title. I mean, five and four, but you've got to, like I said a lot if you can if you can get hot and stay hot. You can, you can be in business and certainly in, uh, poised to make a run uh, or at least make an appearance, uh, return appearance in the NCAA tournament. I don't think I'm crazy saying that. No, you're, you're not. Um, SEC Volleyball, too, is is something very much on the rise, like everything else in the conference. Um, I think they've got five teams ranked right now, which is one of the highest they've had in, in years. Um, it's usually just the Kentucky-Florida show um, and Auburn, and Auburn and Tennessee, and I think there's someone else that are all – Arkansas is currently eight, uh, eight and one overall, and then you got Kentucky, Tennessee, Florida, A and M, then Auburn. So Auburn finds themselves sixth in the conference. I mean, there's still magic that, that could happen. They're going to need help, but a lot of magic that could happen. Yeah, that's not a bad look. For Here's, sure. With with, with the uh, essentially the me metaphorical phoenix of a program, yeah, you should you should take that. <laughs> you should absolutely take that. Thank you for the breakdown on on Auburn volleyball, Colin. I really appreciate you jumping on the show today. Glad we could get this one in, get it in, get in, and get out. Quit messing around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before we get out of here, and before we tell everybody who we are, where they can find us, I want to remind everybody two things. One, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell right here on the College Loop YouTube channel. Make sure you drop a comment, give us your score predictions, whatever makes you happy. Talk about Auburn softball, volleyball, soccer, basketball, badminton. I don't really care. Give us your takes. We want to hear them. We feature the best takes on the show. Also. If you're listening on another platform, five stars, smiley face, thumbs up. I don't really know how all the other platforms work. But if you're listening on another platform, I did see we have a five-star rating on Spotify. So that's really, really cool. You guys are awesome. I saw that today, and that made my day. I hope you guys know that. Colin, how else can everybody support us once again? Just buy the war damn shirt, man, at thewarreport.com. Um, the link is in our description. comes in gray, black, navy, whatever you want. You want orange? We probably won't make orange. Um, Just like jerseys, tough. we will not be making those. <laughs> yeah, no, no orange. Um, you can pick those yeah. up in the link of our description, though. So if you guys don't want to type in www.thewarreport.com, you don't have to. We'll never make you do all that work. That's just cruel and unusual punishment to all the college live enthusiasts. We appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for buckling up on a duos. We were dropping into, into Verdansk. This is duos today, Colin. Um, <laughs> so uh, didn't know where we were dropping. I just went ahead and dropped down. 
that was a wild gamer reference that I don't know that anyone's going to Yeah, catch. I don't know if anyone will understand but, um, our duo's reference. Maybe we'll get squads next week. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll get squads next week. Maybe that's the case. Tell me where they can find you, love you, and support you, Mr. Colin. So, yeah, just follow my Twitter, um, at Byersdorf Colin. That's B-E-Y-E-R-S-D-O-R-F Colin. Yes, sir. I'm by, by Harrison Tar on the Bird app and on Instagram and wherever else you want to find me. I'm the only thing I'm not at by Harrison Tar at is on Venmo. So you guys cannot Venmo request me, you weirdos. I know someone would try it. It'd be weird. I also don't have Zell, so good luck. Anyways, before we get out of here, if you want to make sure that you support the College Loop every way you can, that makes you an absolute dog, by the way, first and foremost. But if you're looking for the, for us anywhere else, we're on all social media is at the College Loop. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And TikTok. So if you guys want to come hang out with us there, still not at a thousand subs. I'm we haven't said this in forever, but I'll say it now. Colin still doesn't have to make a MySpace. Um, he still does have to make a TikTok video. And that one's in the drafts, allegedly, that we never saw. It's in the drafts. It's in the drafts. That's what that's what they all say, Colin. That's what they all say. But make sure you subscribe to the channel, subscribe to us on all of all your streaming platforms, whatever makes you happy wherever you find us. Um, other than that, with all of that being said, as Mr. Dylan Lark would say, who is not with us today, I mean, make sure y'all roast Dylan for that in the comments. That has been Episode 124 of the College Loop, the Tar Bay episode. Sorry, we stole the show.